Okay, so in this week's guitar lesson, we're continuing with this series on the cage system, and we're gonna be looking at the E shape this week. All the things you can put into this E container, scales, chords, arpeggios, so that you can use this stuff when you're improvising. Now, last week, we looked at the C shape. So that was the first uh, video in this little series. That was EP556, by the way, if you wanna go to activemelody.com, do a search for that, just put in 556, do a search for that, and then you can start with that video. I would recommend starting with that, getting familiar with that, and then working your way into this one. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the two shapes, so the C shape information from last week and then this E shape information from this week, we're gonna put them together and start being able to play music with those uh, two shapes. So the song that I played in the intro was all played using the C shape and the E shape. All the information we were, we've discussed in last week's lesson and what we're about to discuss in this one. Um, so there's some extra materials that come with this week's lesson. There's a song we're gonna be learning. We're gonna be learning the first part of the song. If you'd like to learn the second part of that song, so the part two video, uh, download the tablature for the song and also a PDF um, cheat sheet for all of the stuff for this E shape, you can get those extra materials by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP557. Okay, so last week we looked at an E chord using the C shape. And it was played right here. That's your E chord using the C shape. This week, we're gonna be playing an A chord using the E shape. Why do I call this the E shape? Well, when I'm making this chord, these three fingers are making the E shape. Think of your E chord in first position. If you were to slide that all the way up, capo with your finger, or bar, on the fifth fret to replace where the nut was, you're now playing an A chord. Now, how do I know this is an A chord? Well, where I'm barring on that fifth fret, the sixth string and the first string, those notes are A notes. So that means wherever the bar is, that's the name of the chord, if we're looking at the first string or the sixth string. Also where my pinky is when I'm making this chord, that seventh fret fourth string, that's also an A note. So inside of this, you have an A, an A, and an A all the way up here. Three A notes in that chord. All right, so that's the A chord across all six strings. Now when I'm playing that chord, I oftentimes will play it like this. Uh, and just skip the bottom two strings. I find it easier. It's almost like the same as like if you play an F chord. Like sometimes that's how a lot of us learn to play an F chord anyway, was where you just do two, bar two with one finger. You're doing that same shape, but just moving it up, up to here. Uh, there, it just depends on what you're comfortable with. If you can't play a bar chord, you can just play this triad, right? That's still an A chord. It's got the root, the third, and the fifth. One, three, and five. That's all you need to make the chord. All right, so now let's connect the major scale, the A major scale, to this container. Remember, the name of the container is the E container because of that shape. So here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna start with our middle finger on the fifth fret, sixth string, playing that A note, and we're gonna play, and so make sure you get your fingers right on this. So we're gonna go like this. Up to here, that's one octave of it, and we're gonna keep going. So that's two octaves of the A major scale in the E position. Now above this note, um, in this position, I've also got seventh fret first string. And then I can walk it down. And I've got this note fourth fret sixth string. Uh, so those are just some extra notes that are in the scale. Um, so you, if we play all of it now, that is your A major scale in the E position. Now inside of that A major scale is your pentatonic scale. Remember, your pentatonic scale is the same as your major scale, we just get rid of two of the notes. We're gonna get rid of the fourth and the seventh interval. One, two, three, four, get rid of that note. Five, six, seven, get rid of that note, and you have this. This would be pattern two of your major pentatonic scale, and it lives inside of the E shape. So however you can connect that and make it make sense in your mind, so when I'm playing that chord, I've got this little box up here, the little BB box. 
right? That's inside of that pattern two major pentatonic scale. And the most important notes I would say if I were to boil that down would be this little, you know, the first three strings of that. That's where you're going to have most of your note playing as you're improvising. That's where a lot of it comes from anyway. Um, okay, so that's your A major pentatonic scale. Now, this is what I did not talk about last week, and some of you called me out on it in the comments, and so I'm going to remedy this uh, this week. So uh, I did not include arpeggios. I thought it was getting too bloated. I had nine essential tools last week, and then I thought, well, if I do arpeggios, I'm going to have to do one for the major chord, the minor chord, the dominant seven chord, the major seven chord. That's four more things. But I think it's important, and it's worth doing, and it's so easy. I'm going to go ahead and include it in this and I'm also including it by the way in the C uh, lesson from last week so those of you that are premium members in the little PDF down downloadable I've updated it with arpeggios now so you'll have the C arpeggios for each of those uh, major minor or uh, dominant seven and major seven but let's look at the A major arpeggio now here's a really simple way of thinking about arpeggio and we start with the major scale. Remember the major scale, we took two of the notes out of the major scale and that gave us the pentatonic scale, right? We got rid of the fourth and the seventh interval. We have now a five note scale, which is pentatonic. Penta means five. So if we get rid of two more notes out of the pentatonic scale, we're left with the arpeggio. So if we get rid of the second and the sixth interval out of the major pentatonic scale, we're left with the one, the three, and the five. And that is your arpeggio. It's the same notes as your chord. Your arpeggio is your chord. That's part of the reason I didn't include it last week. Was I thought, well, it's kind of just the same notes as the chord. Um, but, uh, but, but it's played differently. You play it more like a scale. In a chord, you play, you know, you play the notes in unison. They're played together. The arpeggio, you play them separate. So the A major arpeggio, looks like this. Actually, let's start at the top. We'll start up here. It's just the chord. There's your one, five, three, one, five. Now we're going to have to come out of that chord to play this note, fourth fret, fifth string, and then down to your uh, fifth fret, sixth string. So it sounds like this. All right, let's move on to this last thing in our major umbrella here, and that's our major seven chord. And so the major seven chord uh, in this position, in this E position, looks like there's, there's two ways you can do it. One, uh, which is probably the most common way, is like that, and I love it because it's just a stair step. So we've talked about this stair step on strings one, two, and three a lot. It'd be fourth fret first string, fifth fret second string, 6th fret 3rd string, and now we're going to add one more note here, which would be our pinky on uh, the 7th fret 4th string. So when you play them all together, you have a major 7 sound. There's our major chord, and then you take your root and you go down one, that's it. But just play it with another root that's a lower than, than that, and you get the major 7 sound, dreamy sound. And so that's one voicing of it. The other way that I see this played in this position is like this. Um, and so these three fingers are making like the A minor shape. This would be like a C minor chord, if you think of that, um, that chord. But instead of me barring like this, I'm gonna take my index finger and put it down on the fifth fret sixth string and play that A note with that minor triad and I get the major seven sound. Now when I'm playing that, I'm letting this finger rest on the fifth string so that it mutes it like that. So, so that may be, well, there we go. That may be a little bit challenging, but just kind of, you know, as you're pushing this one down, just sort of let it touch, lightly touch that fifth string and you get that voicing. All right, so now that we've played the A major seven chord, let's look at the A major seven arpeggio. And it's made up of the one, three, and the five, and the seven, the same notes as the chord. So for starting down here on this A note down here, it looks like this. It's the same as your A major arpeggio, so, and then you just repeat it. Here's the stair step. And then we come up to our A note up here. So we have. All 
That sounds like the music from Stranger Things, you know, the, the intro to that. It has that major seven arpeggio thing. Uh, but that's how you play the, the A major seven arpeggio using the E shape there. All right, let's move on to the next umbrella. We're now gonna look at the dominant seven umbrella. And we're gonna start with our dominant seven chord. Super easy to play. You just play your A major chord and then take your pinky off. Here the flat seven. Remember, a dominant seven chord is your one, three, five, flat seven. So you get that, that nice bluesy sound. Now I can add my pinky here. This is another voicing. I can add it on the eighth fret second string and get that sort of higher uh, octave version of it. So I have that way I can play it or this way. Um, so that's that. Now, if you'll remember last week, there was the perfect scale that fits over that ma that dominant seven sound, and that is a mixolydian scale. Mixolydian scale sounds scary, but it's really just your major scale, but you flat the seven, just like you did with the chord. So it's like this. So that's the A dominant seven scale, or the A uh, mixolydian scale. And uh, to play that in this position, there's one octave of it. Let's keep going. Then we'll come all the way up to here and then we'll walk it down. So you're just going to have to kind of practice playing all of this stuff and use that cheat sheet that, that you know, that downloadable. Uh, that's a great little reference guide for all of this. Uh, the last thing I want to say about this is let's look at the dominant seven arpeggio. And it's going to be the one, three, five, and the flat seven. So it's going to sound like this. There's the first octave. There's the second octave. And then we'll come up to here. So that's your dominant seven arpeggio, your A dominant seven arpeggio in the E shape, the E container. Okay, let's jump into the last umbrella, the minor umbrella. And we're gonna start off with a minor chord. So to play the minor chord, you just take your major chord uh, and then you lift your middle finger. And you've got your minor chord. And you can look, these two notes, these two fingers are making what look like the E minor shape. Are you connecting that? Oh yeah, E minor in first position. I'm capoing up here, playing the A note in the bar. Yeah, okay. That makes sense as to why that would be your minor uh, chord using that E shape. All right, so now let's play our A natural minor scale in this E position. So to do that, we're gonna start with our index finger on the fifth fret sixth string, and we're gonna walk it up like this. There's your first octave. Let's keep going. Notice this, your index finger comes to the fourth fret third string, and then comes over one. So we have like this. So that's two octaves of your A minor scale. Now when we're playing that minor scale, we're flatting the third, we're flatting the sixth, and we're flatting the seventh interval of our major scale. That's just little theory. I talked about that last week as well. But that's what's going on when we're playing that. Now remember, uh, inside of your natural minor scale is your minor pentatonic scale. So we get rid of two notes, just like we did with our major scale uh, to create the major pentatonic scale. In this case, we're gonna get rid of the second and the sixth interval, and we're left with our minor pentatonic scale. And look at where we are. In this E position, we're playing pattern one of our minor pentatonic scale. So maybe a light bulb just went off for somebody out there and you go, oh. So all this time I've been playing this pattern one thing, I'm seeing it now. There's the A note, like we talked about, right? And then here's your minor pentatonic scale, here's your minor chord, and here's your natural minor scale. And you're seeing all of that stuff maybe in a different way. The last little connection point I want to make to this is the arpeggio, the A minor arpeggio. And so that's just your one, your flat three, and your five. Same as the, the major one, but you're flatting the third. One, flat three, five. And then you just keep walking up. One, flat three, five. That's your A minor arpeggio. 
Okay, so now that we have all of that information under our belts, let's start having fun with this and pulling it together and making music. Now, if you're feeling overwhelmed by, gosh, we got all that information under the C shape, now we have the E shape, it starts to make sense when you hear it in a musical context. So don't worry, if you're, if you're lost to this point, once you pull it together into music, it starts to make sense. Let's listen to the first part of this song, and then we'll talk about what's going on. All right, so I want to start off, before I jump into the specific notes, let's talk about the chords that are being played. Uh, and we're going to use these new uh, chord shapes that we've talked about, the C shape and the E shape. And then, uh, and then everything else is going to make perfect sense. So the chords that are used in this are as follows. I'm going to start off and just play them down in first position so you can hear them. We have an E chord, we have an E7, then it goes to an A which is our four chord. And then it goes to the minor four, A minor. I love that sound. You work that into your playing if you're looking for an idea when you're writing. Back to your one chord. And then it goes to the two chord, but major, major two. So it's an F sharp major. I'll talk more about that in a minute. And then to the five chord, which is your B. So that's what we're gonna be looking at. Now I'm played, I just played those in first position. Let's use those same chords, but play them with our new voicings using our new shapes. So the first chord is an E, and I'm gonna play it like this. Now I know some of you have a hard time with bar chords. You don't have to play, you don't have to use all five strings. When I play this E chord shape, a lot of times I just play it like that, that little triad, strings four, three, and two. And then we go to the E7, right? So we're, this, is our, this is using the C shape from last week, just like last week, same chord and everything. Then we go to the E7, and then we go to the four chord, which is right here, our A chord, using the E shape. And actually, when I played it, I played it like this. And then we go to the minor version of that. Remember, we lift our middle finger to get that flat third. And then back to the one chord, which is our E. Walked it up two frets to the major two chord, which is our F sharp. And then I put my pinky down like this to get that seven. F sharp, F sharp seven, and then watch this. I went right into the B chord using the E shape. So everything we just played there was the C shape and the E shape, and you, we were able to play up the fretboard and even play sound a little more melodic when you're playing up that way versus down in the first, first position. So now let's connect things to those chord shapes. So when I started this, I just strummed the chord, my E chord here, or like this, and then I went. That's E major pentatonic scale in the C shape. That's the nose, right? But you can see where it's coming from now, right? And then watch this. It sets up the E7 chord using that, I'm still in that C position. And then I play this. And this is a little chromatic thing. Now I talked about that last week, so check out the C lesson from last week, EP556, C shape lesson. Um, and in that lesson, I, I talked about strings six and five, how you can use those notes chromatically between the fourth fret and the seventh fret. You can hit every note. And bluegrass players do this all the time. stuff is just chromatic stuff. So this, on the first string, you've got those notes as well. Because remember, the first string and the sixth string are the same notes. So if I do this on the sixth string, I can do the same thing on the first string. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that in. This little, that's where that's kind of coming from. So then I played. And then I came to this note, which is the flat seven, right? Right, the E seven. So it's. And then. Now that, is, you can hear, even without a chord underneath it, you can hear the A chord. So the, hammering onto the third interval of the chord. So I'm thinking about this, this little triad here. 
the top part of this chord voicing. So the, these notes. And then I went and played the minor, right? In this position. And then after the minor, I played A minor pentatonic scale, pattern one. I just walked right down the scale. Nothing clever there. And then watch this to get us back to the one chord. So see what happens there? A lot of chromatic things happen. So this is just walking you to this. So a lot of the time when it comes to improvising, you're thinking ahead a little bit. So for example, if this is the note I'm trying to land on, I might go like this and play notes around it knowing where I'm trying to land. Same here to walk up to that third interval in the E chord. So from that A minor, To the E. So after I played the E, then I walked it up. But I'm just play, hitting this note, the third interval of the chord. I'm not going like this, playing the full chord. I'm just hitting the note, the, that one note, which is the third interval of your E. And I slid into it like this. And then my pinky goes down on the ninth fret third string. And then watch this. So that's a slide from the seventh fret to the ninth fret on that second string. And then, and you can hear, even without the chord underneath it, it went into the B chord. Right? And that's what I was thinking about was my B chord using the E shape. I hope a light bulb is going off for somebody out there when you go, okay, so. What we just did there is we, if you think it's almost like you, you take a string and you what we wove a melody through the fabric of the chords. The chords were here, but we play a little melody off of those chords. See, I'm anticipating a step one note away, landing on the third, which is where I wanted to go, and then I can play the chord. And then from here, that B chord, you play a B7, and I played. I came down to that note, that's the flat seven. Remember I say you said to play your, your E shape and take your pinky away? There's that note. So I wanted to land on that. I came down and landed on that note there. Now all of these notes here are coming from this B mixolydian because there's the flat seven, and then I'm landing on the flat seven there. I'm just doing it with a little bit of harmony by holding the bar down and hitting that A note with each. There's strings two and three on the ninth fret, and then a little hammer on. And then here's that chromatic walk down. I wanted to hit that flat seven. All right, so that's the end of this part one video. Uh, come join us in part two where we finish the song, we go through the rest of it. And remember, as a premium member, you'd also have access to the tablature and the PDF uh, downloadable little cheat sheet for this so that you have all the stuff we talked about in one easy uh, to print off or download uh, uh, file. And remember, I also included an updated version of last week's, so the, the C shape, I added the arpeggios to that as well. So you can, uh, you, so we can keep everything consistent. All right, so that's the end of this video. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, click the subscribe button. I put out lessons like this all the time uh, and give me a thumbs up. All right, we'll see you in the next video.